Okay, we're back on the Mustang. Give you a little catch up on what's going on. So, Jimmy got his rear here, Mosier rear, Mosier axles, strange brakes, UPR, UPR bracket for the upper, got control arms here, everything's ready to go. Just waiting on the uh, center section from Strange. And then we're going to be putting on this stuff here. He's got a, a fuel pressure gauge. So we got the line for the fuel pressure gauge. We're going to run all that. Last video you saw, we had the engine running. Sounds good. Josh is just finishing up this. So this side's done. So we got all this back in here. All that back in here. He trimmed all this back up nice. This is all nice. Uh, so what happened was he's he trimmed up all these pieces of the rug, tucked them back in, glued them all on the inside. Put these on here. We're just going to put two little pins right here to hold that in place. Once you put that on there, you're good. Uh, Jimmy's got to find one of the little side kick panels. So those that go here, those get two edge tape and then they snap into those holes and then it holds everything down nice and clean like that side right once we're done with that then he can he's got the seat belts coming so we could put the seat belts in it put the seat in it and i think we're putting one more yeah he's got a transmission temperature gauge we're putting in and a fuel pressure gauge so we're gonna try to get that done today and then whatever he wants to do with his door panels, we're figuring that out still. But once we get the rear set in here, uh, once we get all that stuff set in here and all the brakes run the brake lines, and then we can order some wheels for it, order a dry shaft, because then we'll know what length the dry shaft's got to be. And he'll be good to go. Hopefully we'll get this thing done Make a trip down the drag strip with it before it's too late in the season here because we're almost done, unfortunately. All right, here we go. Finishing touches. Huh? Is it finishing touches? Yeah. Seat belts going in. Sitting that little thing. Off. I just need to cut a little bit of this off. All right. taking the shocks out so there's a big bolt that goes in the middle on these cars which is for that right there right so 18 millimeter bolt that comes off shocks are off this is the original bolt that was in there the other one's like twice the size all right so now we're gonna go up and start taking this housing and start taking the housing off disconnect everything underneath all right so the little six inch I mean the uh, six cylinder rear is all gonna come out all the sway bar we're taking everything off got the front supported so it can't tilt I'm gonna finish taking all these bolts out of here there goes nothing. at the right size yeah <laughs> yep. Jimmy, you're gonna cut this thing off. Those came off easier than the other. Ones. I mean, just, just get a, get the saws on, just snap it off, cut it. What is it, rubber? It's no, plastic. It's I mean, uh, metal. Just cut it off. Yeah. You're not using that no more. Um, saws is in that right. All right. So, all the old stuff's out. That mount gets mounted up there. Oh, solid mount. 
Got these nice UPR control arms. Nice massive arms. All right, so mows your rear, fab rear. There you go. Got that thing wrapped up like a mummy in there. Get that. We're gonna set that up in place. Nice housing. Got a drain plug, the whole bit. So big forward ends. So it's going to bolt into the stock locations. And we should be good. Right, let me give my hand. Oh, so it's huh? Oh, dang. Hang on. Start over. Ready? Ready? Close it again. No. <laughs> you said open them like, like they were all going to be there. And then. Hey, give me a shot. Look at that. Somebody's going to go up there and hook that. So you're gonna put, yeah, you can reach it. So Johnny, listen, you can go up nut. in there and then. So look, give me the give me the rubber. So you're gonna put, see how it, yeah, it comes with everything. See how it's got a small side and a big side. The big side goes down, and then that goes down. Oops, sorry. And then the thick nut. Just catch it for now. So we just we, call we, we Pete. We're gonna figure out which check. hole he's got his car set up in right now, so we can kind of get an idea. So this goes, this car you're works, gonna go in the so. car, this is going to be sticking up through there. Yeah. Just put that down like that, put the washer on it, put the nut on it. Just like that. All right? <clears throat> oh, this side first. Uh, uh, where's, where's the, the key? key? Inside. Oh, all right. All right. <laughs> Someone cut that. <laughs> <laughs> nah, you can't see you in the video. All right, get the key out of there. Okay, so this is where we're going to start. With our holes there. Okay, there was only four. Anyway. For some reason, I thought there was five. I'm going to get the gasket on here. Putting the studs in. Want some Loctite or something? I'm All right. putting silicone on it. Okay. So they don't leak. Yeah. They actually got a nut. I guess the nut goes on the inside. Okay. Uh, probably. They're probably... Locked in, like a jam nut or something. Yeah. So, and then the top one we're going to leave in the bottom so going in for now, and we'll see how it works. Yeah. We'll get everything in here, and we can measure out for his drive shaft, and we're going to put the axles and stuff in it and everything. Track locators in it. Got the center section pumpkin. Okay, he's pulling the axles out right now. Nice. Uh, Alright. 40 spline axles. 40 spliners. Alright, yeah, those you gotta put the seal in that thing, so. Okay. But where's the bearings? They didn't give you any bearings? Yeah, they're down there. They're in yeah. they're in there. Uh, we gotta press bearings on it now? Maybe. They're in that white box they Where's should the be. Uh, in the other room then still. I'll get it. Oh, is it? Yeah. Well, never a dull moment. So we open up the box and there's only one. That, that is the only box. One there's of two one and we got the, it came with the, you know, whole housing. And there's two of everything else for it, but there's only one axle. And then this gets on here, that gets pressed on and then you put the studs in it, but... Now so we're now we're, we're going to have to wait till yeah, Monday wait till and Monday. figure out what happened. And then find out who did it or didn't do it, putting it in the box. One, two. Now, Jimmy, one job. All you have to do is uh, take two axles, put them in the box. <laughs> Somebody was like, nah, I just want <laughs> And then we got to see if this is left or right even, so. Right. All right, well, that's the end of that. That's the end for today. We're all uh, all done up to that. Well, we can still measure out for his drive shaft, but... No, you can't. How am I going to do that? Why? You got to lift the car down. Oh, never mind. So we're done. All right. I mean, you know what? But we can well, put, we could push it up. Put, the jack, put a jack under it and let it lay down. I was going to put it in the other shop and put it flat, flat. On, the, on the rack. Well, whatever. I mean, we could let it down on here and put it up and... and then we're crawling around on the ground.
round, but okay. Whatever. So. Just get Wait. it. Huh? Give me till Monday. I'll snap on someone and then... <laughs> yeah, tell them we need it overnight. Right yeah. Now, in the guy's shop, and you need to send it to me overnight. I mean, but yeah. we'll we'll get this on here and we'll figure out the the drive shaft. So, all right. Okay. Measure this out. You want me to get under there and hold it, or? And a half. 54, 54 and a half. Jimmy, 54 and a half. Dry shaft showed up for Jimmy's car. PST, same one we got. Really quick, so. You ordered this like two days two ago. Two days ago, yeah. so. Everything comes. These guys are pretty quick. They're out of Florida. Alright, All right, so we're gonna take that out of the box and put it in the car. Still waiting for the axle. See, that's how you package something. Yeah, that's packaged nice. And you gotta get a what you call cut that off. Alright. Alright, so that's all the way in. Alright. So when you measure it, you measure from this edge of here to the middle of this. Yeah, now you gotta hold on. To hold it like that way, right? Yeah. There, there it goes. goes. Right there. You just gotta center it. Hang on. Yeah. It's not centered. Okay. Like yep. pull, pull it in. Ready? Yeah. That's it. Okay. Alright, here's the joints. Here's the U bolts. Cool. Alright. And then we gotta, we'll set up the pinion angle because you could tell that's wrong already. <laughs> it's like way yeah. tight. All right, well, we'll see when it's sitting on the ground. So for now, just put that on. So yes, dry shaft is all set. One more piece to the puzzle. Could be moving on its own power. Once we get that other axle, we'll figure out putting it all back together. All right, well, let's fast forward now. A week later, today's Monday. Um, so what happened with the axles? Let me do a little recap because I don't know where I left off. So this is probably going to be part of the other video. So he ordered all this stuff from Mosier. Strange axle. I mean, a Mosier and a strange rear and all that. So if you look real good in the videos, you could see one of the boxes where the axles, the box where the axles go were in. The box was damaged. I didn't think nothing of it. The thing weighed a freaking ton. So I'm thinking... Whatever. I didn't look in the box. I figured he wanted to open the box himself. Whatever. So, in that last video now, in the last couple of clips, so we take the axle out. There's only one axle in the box. So now it's Saturday. Can't do nothing about it. We're waiting. We're looking around. Obviously, it ain't here. It's not like something like uh, oh, a little nut or a bolt rolled out of the box and rolled under a bench or something. We can't find it. It's a freaking 25-pound... 40 spline axle okay they package them like crap okay just so you know you package them like crap and then you got the nerve to tell them oh maybe they damaged it or maybe they that we lost it or that we damaged it please okay so now you lost the customer but in the meantime he needs an axle so Monday morning comes he calls them up and they and he tells them that they probably that we he don't know that he's friends with us and that he was here opening it that we probably lost it or damaged it and like what am i going to do with an axle 
A 40 spline piece of crap axle, by the way. Okay, not for nothing. We we ordered um, Mark Williams axles. They're 100 percent better than these, in my opinion. Okay, but make a long story short, the kid's only 21 years old. He got no money. He's trying to build a race car. We're helping him out. That's the box they sent the second axle in. So you could see it ain't hard to lose an axle out of the box, especially when you don't even wrap it in anything. So now, fast forward, we get, they can wait. So now they tell them they're giving them the runaround. I mean, call FedEx. They must have lost it. We don't know, right? Nobody knows nothing. So... They don't want to give him another axle for free. They want to charge him another axle. And he's asking me. I'm like, you got no choice. What are you going to do? Order. I mean, you could get axles from somebody else, but now you got to buy two axles from somebody else. You might as well just bite the bullet and, and, and get it. In the meantime, the FedEx guy shows up here. Our regular guy shows up. And I tell him what's going on. And he's like, oh, I said, did you leave some boxes at my gate? I hate when they leave boxes there without telling me, but did you leave any box? And this guy normally doesn't. He'll call me up. They got my phone number. Did you leave uh, any? No. He's like, nope. He says, I would have put them in a plastic bag anyway. He said, what were they? I said, they were two big boxes. He goes, oh, I would have remembered that. He goes, it's probably the, you know, the, the filling guy when, when he's off. So he takes a picture of the box, takes a picture of the thing, and he says to me, it probably fell out of the box, you know, on a conveyor or something in transport, and then... They probably just threw it in the cage, he called it, and I guess where the lost and found crap is that nobody could figure out what box it came out of. Because, and you too, you see something fall on the ground out of a box, you're too lazy to pick it up and put it back in a box, right? Not my UPS guy, but whoever's in the, uh, whoever's in the warehouse doing this stupid stuff. So now they don't want to know nothing. They don't, nobody wants to know nothing. So he orders another axle. They give him a discount, I guess, whatever, on an axle, which now he had to pay for it anyway. Gets another axle. He ordered it. When does it show? We're waiting, waiting, waiting. It don't show up Friday. It don't show up Saturday. We're like, ah, right, now you ain't going to get it till next week. I come home last night from the track at like 1030 at night, and I'm going to put a picture up. There's the axle sitting in front of my gate again. Not my normal guy. He leaves it right there in the front where anybody could see it and pick it up and take it away. And that's the box. Okay? Again, another damaged box. Like they're dragging it on the ground like a bunch of apes or something. Yeah, I'm going. All right, back to getting this thing back together. All right, so I clearanced this one also. Put the T-bolts in it. I had to clean out the uh, powder coating on a couple of these holes, but... And then you got these T-bolts that go in here. They lock up against the back of the housing. Tighten this up. Now the bracket for the brakes is on. So the bearings get pressed on. The bracket has to go on the, on the axle. Then the bearing, and then it's got a locking collar, like a pressed on locking collar. Uh, I'll show you what that looks like. because. They sent another one with the new axle they sent, so but all this has to be pressed on and put on while it's apart. And then you're good to go. So and then the next thing is gonna be tighten all this up, go do the other side. Let me finish tightening them up. I'm going to tighten the other side. And then uh, the 5 8 studs go in here. And there's a, a, a real skinny locking nylon nut that goes on the inside that locks it in. And then that's on. And then you put that hat or the rotor on. And you put the caliper on. You got to line up so the rotor has to go on flat. And then the caliper has to be centered. The rotor has to be centered in the caliper. They give you little shims. You guys seen me do this before. You put the little shims in there. Make sure that the rotor and the caliper, everything's centered so that the pads have the same amount of play on each side. They have the same amount of clearance. Put them in. Tighten everything up. I don't think he has. The only thing I'm going to have to get. I got to look. I, don't, I didn't see anything. So 
there's no brake line so we got to get stainless steel brake lines that go from each caliper to the middle and then a T to the body and then the line going forward so that'll be pretty much the last thing to do and then we'll bleed the brakes for the rear the fronts are already done we put a plug in it if you remember we put a little plug in the uh, master cylinder that goes to the back so that we did have fronts and we could bleed the front so now we're just gonna finish up the rears so this had individual you know uh, what do you call uh, brake uh, anti-lock braking system and everything so each wheel had its own you know own line going to it from the ABS so which we don't have that no more so hopefully I could get this all finished up tonight or at least get this on I gotta find I gotta look on. that's the rotor that's the calipers another rotor another caliper in the box those are the studs those are the brake pads and those are the bolts for the calipers yeah I didn't think he got those so that's gonna be another thing we're gonna have to order a set go online and find it see how long they got to be and what kind of probably have to have like a a 90 on one side and straight on the other side or something we'll figure that all out all right that's that let me do the studs i'll show you what it looks like i'll just do one and i'll show you the rest of them or i mean i'll show you one and do the rest okay of them. again another damaged box like they're dragging it on the ground like a bunch of apes or something yeah i'm going off on a ramp because this this is retarded man you pay all this money for something the kids you know he ain't got no money he's, he's trying to get a car he's on a budget right we're helping him out and these guys are like everybody like <laughs> it's crazy so now, they come with bearings, but they're not pressed on. So now you gotta go get, you gotta find a way to press the bearings on. So shout out to Ron. My buddy Ron just pressed them on for us. Okay, put the collar on, put the bearings on, so we got the bearing on. Now I go put the plate on, and you can already see what happened, right? So this has a lip on it, and it needs to sit flush which it does now because I clearanced it so that sits like that well this doesn't it won't if you look it won't clear the bolt where is it all right because it's got a lip on it nobody knows how to fit anything anymore so I had to clearance the back of the housing like that all right take that little bit off so that now this sits in here because this has a groove in it the groove centers on top of that this is your brake bracket for the rear brakes right and then it goes like that and now it's centered so now it's sitting flush down there and now all the bolts will fit so you got the little t-bolts that go through here okay so that's where we're at right now i got a car stuck on my lift for almost nine days because of dumb crap. You don't even want to know what I really think. But there you go. All right, drive shaft's in. That fit perfect. Ordered the drive shaft. Two days drive shaft was here. Shout out to them. Okay, PST, awesome. I'm always dealing with them. Mosier, mm, mm, I'm not too happy with them. So that's just my rant and rave. And we'll see what happens. So now I got to put that all together. I'm going to finish doing all the brakes, run the brake lines. And then this car can start and move on its own power. All right. Change hands. So this has a shoulder. That's going to get threaded onto that. All right. And that'll bottom out on that shoulder in there. Like that. And then it's got a locking nylon nut that goes on the inside. Keep it from backing off when you try loosening the wheel with a the gun or something. So we gotta hold that, tighten that, 
and then these the wheel goes on then the spacer goes on and then the 5 8 nut goes on now you, you get fancy you get all the crazy aluminum nuts titanium whatever you want but that's what it'll look like okay so let me get all these on and then i'll show you what it looks like when it's done all right so studs are all on locking nuts are on so i'm just going to hold it with the vice grip and then tighten these up these are 15 16 i'm going to lock all them in place and then that's done all right so this is how it comes you got these little shims so what i did was i double up on the washer locked the caliper i mean the rotor right in place to make sure everything's centered make sure you got enough play on either side you can see that right dead center and then it's got this little collar that goes in between and a allen bolt with a locking 7 16 that's what holds that in these shims are what you would use to center it if you needed it centered these are the fittings these are going to get some teflon on them uh these are the fittings for the brake so basically take the little plug out that's going to go in its spot so this washer is going to go here this is for the other side i'm going to go put the other side together this side's all set all right brakes are all done fittings are on now we got to order i got 32 and 32 so we're gonna somewhere in the middle over here so i gotta go look and see if i can find some steel steel braided lines it's gonna have a 90 on this end go up and over and then to the center and then we'll connect it in the middle and then have another one uh like a 24 or something to come off of the middle to the body and then we'll tee it off and run a nice steel line to the front